Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the 19 A notes on rate of change. Um, at the end of this, you should be able to say I can find the average rate of change of various functions given a graph or information in context. All right, so um, first thing, let's just uh, make sure we're all on the same page with rate. So a rate is simply a comparison between two quantities of different kinds. All right, so like miles per hour is one of your most uh, popular rates. All right, so with that, um, let's try, this is example one from page 602. Joe did 213 push-ups on the push-up rings in three minutes and smacked his head six times, whereas Marie did 260 push-ups in four minutes and smacked her head seven times. Compare their performances using rates. All right, so um, let's pull out the important information. So Joe, 213 push-ups, three minutes, six smacks. Uh, Marie, 260 push-ups, four minutes, seven smacks. All right, so there's different ways that we can compare these. So we can compare push-ups per minute, push-ups per, or smacks per push-up, and then also um, minutes per smack. So let's take a look at all those. So we've got uh, push-ups per minute first, and then smacks per minute, and then smacks per push-up. All right, so if it's push-ups per minute, we want to do... Um, push-ups on the top and then the per is our little division and then minutes on the bottom okay so that's gonna be our rate so for Joe he had 213 push-ups in three minutes all right and then let's see Marie well let's see let's just calculate out that what that is so 213 uh, divided by three so 213 divided by 3 gives us 71 push-ups per minute. All right, and then let's take a look at Marie. She did 260 push-ups in four minutes. All right, so that would be... So that is 65 push-ups per minute. Okay, now let's compare, um, say, smacks per minute. So Joe had six smacks in three minutes for an average rate of two smacks per minute. So he whacked his head twice every minute. You, you would think you'd stop after the first one, but... Or why would you even do you know push-ups on the push-up rings? But anyway, to each their own, I guess, right? So um, Marie seven smacks for four minutes, um, which is going to give us. Oops, sorry, that's going to give us. I don't need that. Um, that's going to be one point seven five smacks per minute. Okay, and then the last one, smacks per push-up. Okay, so if we're going to do it, as it says here, smacks per, per push-up, we're going to do six smacks for every 213 push-ups. All right, I should have done that over here, push-ups. And push-ups. All right, so... Um, we've got, let's take 6 and divide it by 213. We get 0 .028, 0 0.028 smacks per push-up. Okay. <clears throat> and then let's see if we're going to do, have a, figure out what Marie's is. She was 7 smacks for 260 push-ups. All right, and that's going to give us 7 divided by 260 is 0 0.27. Let's go with smacks per push-up. All right, <clears throat> now it asks us to um, compare the performances using rates. So, 
Joe does more push-ups per minute, although he didn't do as many, he didn't go for as long, so that's probably why. Um, whereas Joe also smacks his head more often. And um, let's see, Joe actually has more smacks per push-up. Okay, so depending on how you look at it, well, actually, I don't think either one of them is terribly intelligent because they're doing push-ups on push-up rings. But anyway, we compared their performances using three different types of rates. Okay, let's look at one more um, example, and then we'll call it good. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So finding an average rate from a curved graph. All right, so the number of banjo playing mice and... Mike the mouse and the peat bog pickers was recorded on a weekly basis. Estimate the average increase for week three to week six. Okay, so um, we've got week three is right here and week six is right here. So what we want to do is we basically we want to find the slope of the line that connects those two points. Hey, that's not too bad. That's fairly straightish. So we want to find the the um, the average rate is just the slope or the gradient. So we want to find the slope between those two points. So let's call this first point here. Let's see. That is at three, and it looks like let's see. That's a hundred to one hundred fifty. Let's call that three and one ten, just for just to make our life a little bit easier. So we got three and one ten for one. And then this other one is at six, and that looks just a little short of that. Let's call that six and two forty. Okay, so really all we need to do, need to do is just find the slope of that because that's our slope is the same thing as a rate. All right, so that's two forty minus one ten. Whoa, that's terrible. There we go, over six minus three. So 240 minus 110 is what, 130 over 3. And let's see, let's 130 divided by 3 gives us 43.3. So that means there is an, what, an increase of 43.3 um, new mice per is it weak? Yeah, weak. Okay, so that's our average increase between weeks three and week six. Okay, so obviously if we were to go farther back, that slope is going to be a little bit smaller. If we were to go farther up, that slope is going to be a little bit more, um, is going to be a little bit steeper. Okay, so like more and more people got more and more popular as, as they went on, as you can obviously imagine. Um, okay, and then one last thing to think about because this is really what's kind of starting to get us into the uh, calculus section of this here is the instantaneous rate of change at a particular point is given by the gradient or the slope of the tangent to the graph okay so the instant like how fast it's growing at that exact second in time is this little tangent line here so um, almost think of this you can think of the graph here as a ball and think of the tangent line as the ground and so it's that point where the ball touches the ground it's whatever the slope of that of that the, of the ground is i guess you would call it at that point of course the ground's going to be horizontal hopefully um, anyway that is a just a quick introduction to um, what we're going to be doing in our calculus unit here okay if you you should now be able to say that you can find the average rate of change of various functions given a graph or information in context. All right, if you have any questions, please ask. Thanks.